This is a really quite a good question. How how should we interact in politics if we believe there should be kind of a separation between church and state? And that's kind of the next question is similar type of topic, but like, uh, what is like? How can you please elaborate on kind of the dangers of like what is even church separation of church and state, and what are the dangers there? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a multi layered question. Um, on the one hand, some engagement with politics, I think, is inevitable. Like I hear people say, you know, rather than be in, rather than be in politics or in, or in government, we should be on the margins of society, being a prophetic voice, mm. standing up for the for the refugee, for the outcast, for the you know for for women, for children, which is all well and good. But what happens when people start listening to your prophetic voice, and people want to know which candidate you endorse? Um, yeah. at, at that point, some positive engagement um, is unavoidable. In other words, at some point, um, if, if you have a, a prophetic voice that you want to influence the public square and the lives of people, mm. you're going to get a little bit Constantinian at some point, whether you like it or not. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, if people are listening to the prophet or the pastor and they want to know, well, what is a Christian? What is a Christian way of being a human being? And hey, let's do that. Yeah. Then you're going to end up interfacing with politics some way. Um, no one, no one can be completely apolitical unless you, you know, completely cut off yourself from society. But if you believe in being that voice mm. of reason, of hope, and justice, some interface with politics is necessary. But what we need to stop are two extremes. On, on the one hand, we don't want to, we don't want to be a theocracy. We don't want to replace the governor general um, with the pope, Dalai Lama. <laughs> chief rabbi or an yeah. ayatollah. Okay, that always that always ends badly. Yeah, it leads to it leads to nominal religion, and then you end up preferencing one religion on the others. Yeah. Okay. At the other side, we also need something that will protect us from the state. The state should not tell you how to do your religion. Uh, and sadly, at the moment, in some states, they're um, they're wanting to do that, particularly when it comes to things like marriage. Mm. Um, telling us how uh, I think the Victorian government wants to provide some notes to churches on how they're allowed to talk about family, marriage, and sexuality. Yeah, right. Uh, government, the government should not be telling you how to do your religion, mm. because if a government can tell you how to talk about marriage, the same government can also tell you um, who should be baptized. Yeah. The same government can tell you. Um, you know, um, who can or can't be a leader in your church. Yeah. So the solution to that is what I would call a healthy view of secularism. Yeah. Uh, secularism means we're not going to be a, the a theocracy, but secularism also means the government doesn't tell you how to do your religion, mm. okay? And that's very important. And I say that as an Anglican, and the Anglicans have traditionally um, arrested uh, imprisoned Baptists for their religious... <laughs> deviousness. So um, we need a little bit of secularism, even if only to protect the Baptists from evil Anglicans like myself. Yeah. <laughs>